We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This is a real important tip this week for those that are ultralight pilots, ultralight builders, those who know everything about the world of ultralights, but especially for those that want to learn something new about ultralights. Here's what's happening. The EAA has announced that on February 22nd, 23rd and 24th, they are providing a free online webinar called the EAA Virtual Ultralight Days. And this is going to be open for everyone. Mandatory attendance. Let's take a look at what they say, reading their website. Join us on Tuesday, February 22nd through Thursday, February 24th for an educational online event. EAA Virtual Ultralight Days. The subject matter experts of the ultralight community will present webinars on the lighter side of recreational aviation, including how to get started in ultralights, how to instructions on a variety of ultralight aircraft like gyroplanes, power parachutes, and trikes, and overall informative topics on maintenance airport operations, safety inspections, and more. Now, what's really nice here is that all webinars are free of charge to everyone interested in ultralight aviation. However, if you can't make it these three days to watch these webinars, then you're in a little bit of trouble. On-demand recordings of these presentations will only be available to members. So it's not the end of the world, but you would have to join the EAA to watch recordings of these. So if you want it free, attend these three days. And I'll go over the syllabus here so you can decide whether or not or which webinars you want to attend. Obviously, you don't want to blow all three days watching these. These are going to be basically in the afternoon to early evening, a couple hours apiece, and by understanding the topic matters, you can pick out the ones you want to watch. Obviously, it would be great to see all of them, but uh, some of us have other things we need to do during the day. But clearly, rather than getting your information from social media, my gosh, we all see the type of comments and information that come out of there, good ones and not so good ones. I happen to know that these are as close to experts as there can be in the ultralight realm. Uh, the EAA is an organ organization that I have been pumping hundreds and hundreds of dollars into over the years and it's nice to see we're getting something back. This will be well worth it and what's nice is that it's open to everyone. You don't have to be a member. As we mentioned what you do have to be a member for is if you want to watch these not live but recorded after the fact. And also there will be um, live uh, questions and answers after each segment so that you can post questions um, uh, to these uh, moderators, these experts, as they talk about their topic. So let's go quickly over the various topic matters and on which day they are. This is all, by the way, on the web. I'll have a link in the description down below the video so that you, because you do need to go and sign up, so to speak register for it so they know how many people and how many virtual links. So this can be done on any tablet, computer, phone, whatever, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it's a webinar and it will be live. So let's take a look at the syllabus here. Now what I'm going to do here is give a one to two sentence summary from the EAA website on each of these presentations so that in just a few minutes here you can decide which of these is really of importance 
and then go and schedule the time on your calendar and be sure to sign up and watch it. So on day one, the first day, February 22nd, the very first presentation is called Getting Started in Ultralights. This is probably one of the more important ones because the presenter is Tim Bogenhagen. He's been flying for years and years. He works for the EAA and what's nice is you can get it from the horse's mouth on what the rules are to fly an ultralight, what makes up an ultralight. In other words, not all this loosey-goosey stuff you hear on the internet. He will tell you in this presentation, I know, just what it means to the FAA and the rest of the world what ultralight means. So his presentation is at one o'clock and the uh, summary they have is ultralight vehicles have long been an affordable way to experience the three-dimensional freedom and exhilaration of the sky. EAA staff member and ultralight and light plane guru Tim Bogenhagen will discuss the simple rules of part 103 so you get the actual rules and tips for getting started. So that, in my opinion, is a must attend. So that's one o'clock on the 22nd. The second presentation, which starts at 2.30, so they're spaced about every hour and a half, is called How To for Powered Paraglide. Now this is powered paragliders are dreams come true for many as you literally run in the air with taking off. So that is the form of ultralight where you get the big uh, parachute over your head, you have a motor strapped to your back and you start running on your feet and you go. So that may or may not apply to uh, our afford a plane crowd here, but at least you will learn what that is all about. What's kind of interesting is that a lot of the motors they use with power paragliders will work with our ultralights. So we're gonna uh, join Jeff Steinkamp as he explains the equipment and the basics of flying and maintaining a paramotor. The third one at four o'clock on uh, the first day on Tuesday is Rotax two-stroke operation and tips. Now this is real good if you have a Rotax engine. If you don't, aren't gonna use a Rotax engine, it's still very useful information, but it's really useful. Phil Lockwood, the presenter, is the guy who started Lockwood Aviation. I guarantee nobody knows from a technical and mechanical standpoint more about Rotax engines than Phil. He was there back in the 80s when they all got started. So this presentation, if you haven't heard him talk before, is well worth it if you have a Rotax two-cycle engine because what he does is go over the main tips and things you should know for maintaining these Rotax engines. Um, he runs a Rotax service center, has decades of experience operating and maintaining. He's also a pilot, of course, the two-strokes engine. So again, he is the expert in Rotax two-cycle engines. I'm just telling you, those are my comments. Fourth presentation, which will start at 5.30 on Tuesday, is called All About Quicksilvers. So that's a type of ultralight you've probably heard of. They were back around when ultralights really started getting going. And this is by Gene Beaver Bourne. And he's been operating his business called AirTech, offering sales service and flight training of the Quicksilver ultralight since 1977. So if you're interested in that, that's an excellent place to listen to. Now the last one for the day at seven o'clock is someone you already know. He was the guy who silently covered our rudder with the fabric, if you remember just a couple weeks ago, and that's Jim Farr. And you know what he's going to talk about? Not fabric covering. The care and feeding of the half VW engine. Now for those of you who have thought about the half VW engine, He's the man to talk to. He put one together. I think he's put a couple together. He has one flying on his uh, B-Light ultralight aircraft. And uh, the presentation says these are the advantages in lower fuel burn. Some people like four-stroke four stroke engine, modifying a vintage VW car engine so that it has only two cylinders. That's why it's called the half VW, has been popular. Uh, on ultralights. So Jim is going to talk about the details and lessons he's learned over the years building, rebuilding, and maintaining operating his half-powered B-Light Ultra Cub. So if you have any interest in the half VW engine, listen to Jim. He'll talk a lot more than he did when he was covering our rudder. Let's go on to Tuesday.
Now Tuesday is the second day and on day two the first presentation which will start at one o'clock they all start at one o'clock is called fixed wing transition training from GA to ultralights. This is real important for pilots who fly regular planes. Regular planes meaning uh, certificated planes where you have to have a pilot's license. Jumping into an ultralight is not a no-brainer. I fly both regular small planes and ultralights and I will attest that if you jump into an ultralight without any knowledge or training or forethought, even though you're a great pilot in that Cessna or Piper or whatever, there's a very good chance you're going to do some really bad damage to you and your airplane. They fly differently. Now that's only to say that it's easy to overcome that and that's what this presentation is about by Mark Murray. Fixed wing ultralight vehicles generally have a high drag and low mass characteristic especially compared to typical general aviation airplanes. Because of this if you transition from GA to ultralight it is wise to get transition training to avoid an accident or expensive incident. And so CFI Mark Murray will help us break down the differences and guide, guide GA pilots to a safe transition for ultralights. So again, uh, that should be a very good uh, seminar for those in that position. The second presentation, then at 2.30, is how to for gyroplanes. If you ever wondered about gyroplanes, they are great aircraft. And by the way, just like everything else, some gyroplanes are actually qualify as ultralights. If you listen to the first presentation by Tim Bogenhagen, you'll learn about the weight and fuel restrictions. Some gyrocopters, the real small ones, are ultralights. So anyhow, Bob Snyder is going to talk about uh, owning and flying uh, gyroplanes, but Bob Snyder will present all about gyroplanes and how this type can fit into turbulent or windy conditions that keep other aircraft on the ground. If you didn't know something about gyroplanes, they can fly when other airplanes can't. The wind does not affect them in the same way at all. It's actually pretty phenomenal. And if, okay, third presentation on Tuesday is at 4 o'clock, and that one is called How To For Powered Parachutes. Now, most of us are familiar with powered parachutes. This is going to be presented by Roy uh, Beiswanger. It's one of the easiest to learn and relaxed types of recreational flying. Join PPC flight instructor examiner Roy Beiswanger as he shares the details and overall beauty of this inherently stable flight flying machines. So if you're into that, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of these people. The next presentation is at 5.30. It was interesting. Sailcloth covering, installations, and maintenance tips. Now, we had talked about covering our uh, affordable plane with um, polyfiber. This is kind of the alternate. There's a sailcloth, and there's actually a Dacron, and they're kind of related. But uh, So this will be good for all of us to listen to. Malcolm Brubaker, there are many benefits of sailcloth covering for ultralights, including being inexpensive, no painting, and quick installation. I think you have to do some fabricating and sewing, but we'll, we'll find out. I'm going to listen to this one. Join ultralight sailmaker Malcolm Brubaker from Great Sales as he provides tips for installation, maintenance, cleaning, and repairs for sailcloth covering. Should be very, um, I'm going to learn a bunch of stuff from that. And the last one on Tuesday is at 7 o'clock. And that one is all about the Aerolite 103. Now, the Aerolite 103 is one of those ultralights that was around from early days and is still very popular today. The presenter is going to be Dennis uh, Carley, who is the owner of the current um, Aerolite distributor ma or manufacturer. He actually makes them. Uh, they make kits which can be built in less than a week. Design has many appealing aspects. Also, that is one of the planes where you can get electric propulsion instead of a gas engine for a fee it costs a little bit but still he's had it out at air shows I've seen it that's uh, that's quite an airplane so for those of you who fall down and flat and don't finish the afford a plane the Aerolite would be an excellent choice it's a kit it will go together etc but at least you should you'll learn something if you watch that let's go to day three this is your last day some still uh, good stuff so this will be on Thursday and the very first one is buying and restoring ultralights. Now here's the deal. 
there's a heck of a lot of old ultralights out there in the garages and hangars uh, that have been sitting out there for years and years and years and lots of years. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a bad experience and they'll put it away and it'll just sit there or someone will buy it and then they won't use it and they'll sell it and buy it, etc. So the point here is this presentation by Dave Alberg is how to examine and look at these and say, hey, should I get involved with it or not? Um, there, there were quite a few, and this is back in the 80s and 90s, um, back when ultralights uh, were just getting started. Lots of kits out there. So we consider them vintage. You can usually get them for a little bit of money. I see them on Facebook Marketplace all the time. The problem is if you have no knowledge about what you're looking for or how to evaluate it, you get into big trouble. That's the purpose of this seminar. So this is a good one if you think you're gonna be scrounging for a real, because there's some great deals to be had price-wise by getting these old ones. But remember, your, your butt is in your life. Your life is in your hands here. You, you don't want the thing breaking apart either because the fabric's no good or mechanically it's no good or the engine stops when you least expect it. So what might be a good value uh, might uh, cost a lot in medical bills later. So this is a great uh, presentation to see. So that'll be the first one on day three at one o'clock. Second presentation is called Airport Operations and Ultralights. Now this is very important. I wish everyone would watch this. Ultralights have the ability to legally use airports with some conditions and that's what this presentation is about. First of all, you know, the airport has to be publicly funded. There's tons of small airports out there that are private and no, you can't go on there unless you get permission. But a lot of uh, airports uh, out there that uh, do take public money, they're in some way publicly funded, you have the right to use them. But again, you want to be careful because there are some requirements. Now, number one, there can be no control tower, so these are uncontrolled airports. But if you are going to fly at one of these airports, other pilots with regular GA planes might not either think so, it doesn't mean just because they're wrong that you have to leave, so you need to educate them, but you also have to follow the appropriate airport rules or you'll get booted off real quick, right? So, so the purpose of this presentation is to understand that if you don't want to get in trouble by the FAA, you can use these airports as long as you know the airport rules. And that's what this is about. Now, those that are regular pilots, we, we know this stuff, but if you're not a pilot and haven't gone through all of that, that shouldn't discourage you from getting into ultralights but you got some learning to do. This is a great summary of what you need to integrate an ultralight into airport operations. Now, if you have your own strip of land somewhere, uh, it doesn't matter, but a lot of us would like to fly there. Now, now here's another thing I'll just throw in on the side. Um, if you listen to the very first presentation by Tim Bogenhagen, you'll learn what a legal ultralight is. If you're bringing in an illegal ultralight to one of these airports, just be aware that you know you possibly are exposing yourself to some trouble. So again, that's why I keep trying to push, keep the thing as legal as possible, right? Weight, gas, you know, all of the rules he'll go over uh, because if you're gonna be using airports, it sure helps to be legal if you wanna keep your butt out of as much trouble as possible. Um, not saying any of us haven't broken laws from time to time, but I'm just saying if you want to use these airports, the more legal you are, the less trouble you get into. Okay, that's moving along. The third one at four o'clock on our third day is entitled Safety Condition Inspections for Ultralights. This is another good one, right? How do you know, how do you inspect an ultralight to make sure it's safe? Part of that has to do with testing your fabric, right? Has the has the uh, UV rotted it out. It'll look fine, but how do you really test to make sure it is solid? Mechanically, what do you check? You know, the linkages, your cables, control cables, the engines and stuff. This is presented by uh, Denny Demeter. Routine inspections and proper maintenance are a key part of operating safely. It's got to become a mindset. So Denny Demeter is going to share what he has learned over the years to maintain, maintain and inspect your ultralight. All these presenters in the previous one about airport operations, I didn't even mention his name, uh, Lily Johnson. Um, these are people that uh, have had a lot of experience over the years, so they're not just you know speaking from some book or something like that. So uh, fourth presentation on our last day is how to for weight shift trikes. Those are the ones with the uh, 
triangular wings and you're sitting in a small wheeled uh, contraption and you have a bar that you move left to right, no stick. That's what really makes it different. Those are still very popular in lots of places. That's presented by Paul Hamilton. Paul Hamilton has been around, oh boy, for as long as I remember they've had uh, trikes. So he's been, he's a teacher, trainer and all this. And our very last presentation on the third day is, this is a good one, the top 10 causes of two stroke failure. Now, did, did anyone know that two strokes fail from time to time? All right, okay, they do. And there's, there's more than one reason they fail? Qu quite a few, okay. Well, well then th these are the top 10 reasons when, and when they fail. And I'm just pulling your leg. I've been behind flying two strokes for a number of years, let's say. Two stroke motors have many advantages. And this is presented by Brian Carpenter who has a uh, Rotax repair center. He's been working on this stuff for years and years. Join Brian Carpenter from his company, providers of light sport repairman training as he discusses the types of failures that can occur if they're not inspected or maintained or operated properly. That will be a very important one. This basically goes beyond Rotax engines, right? Because a lot of us have things other than Rotaxes. These are generic inherent qualities of Rotax of, of two cycle engines that can fail and things we should learn. I mean, this type of knowledge in these three days will literally save your life or let's say make things less costly or let's say get you off the ground where something doesn't just fluster you because of something mechanical or procedural or what the case. So if I can summarize, now this is just me talking, okay? And that and a quarter will get you a, a, a really cheap cup of coffee, but if I were to pick the classes that I think were real important for us afford a plane builders, I would say back on the first day, getting started in ultralights, that is a must. It goes over all the rules and regs of what an ultralight is, because if you don't really get that down, you're going to be cutting corners and cheating all the way through and get yourself in trouble later on. Um, I would also uh, visit uh, Jim Farr's half VW engine if you're into engines, absolutely. On the second day, the very first one, that fixed wing transition uh, for GA to ultralights, very important if you're a pilot and you're going to get ready to jump in an ultralight. If you haven't pilot, if you're not a regular pilot, you don't need this class, right? Because you don't have any habits to unlearn or, or subconscious ideas of how things are supposed to go when you're flying. But if you're a GA pilot, yes, you need to unlearn or change some things to get into that ultralight. And then um, I would also, I'll be interested in the sailcloth one and uh, the aerolite uh, I think is interesting too. But then on day three, the very first one, buying and restoring vintage ultralights. We'll learn a lot about our own ultralights as far as what to look for. That's going to be a good one. But the second one on day three, on day three, airport operations, very important, right? We're all going to take our ultralight probably to an airport, maybe, maybe not. You need to know what's important if you're allowed to even use it there or not. And then um, the third one, safety condition inspection for ultralights, very important one. We are going to need that. And then the last one on day three, those top 10 causes of two stroke failures. So there you have it. Hopefully I'll see you all here. We're taking attendance. No, I'm just kidding. But you do need to register, sign up uh, prior to these. The link for signing up is down there. And just to review, it's February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in the afternoon from 1 to 7. But you need to sign up for each individual seminar that you think is best. So until then, if you haven't been, there's no need to be goofing off everyone back to building and we'll see you next time.